Last month, I finally started working on the editor for my game engine, and today we are here to talk a little bit about the internal representation of a game scene, and how a game engine might manage game scenes. So first things first, what is a game scene? And one definition may be an environment for real-time multimedia simulation. The game scene needs to be real-time because a game has to react immediately to user input. We also emphasize multimedia because a game consists of audio files, textures, 3D models, and also code that drives the simulation itself. All kinds of multimedia could be part of a game simulation. Of course, different game engines have their own ways of defining and managing a scene, but there are a lot of common concepts that appear again and again in different game engines. For example, almost all game engines have the concept of a asset. An asset is usually static data. It could range from audio to textures. Basically, any type of media that we just mentioned could be a asset. After the artist finishes authoring some digital content, we import the media into the game engine as a game asset. But a game asset does not really do much on its own, so we need another idea, components. Here a component simply provides some type of functionality, usually operating on assets. For instance, a audio player component might take audio assets and then play them in the scene when prompted. In most game engines, assets on their own will not do much. Usually it is the components in the scene that makes things happen. Last but not least, there is also the notion of a script. Game scripts are written by game programmers so that the components can respond to player input in some way and also simulate the scene based on some game logic. Speaking of scripts, I am pretty close to adding scripting to my game engine. The first scripting language in my engine will be Lua, and I'll definitely be making a video on that, so stay tuned for the video. Some engines have a script component, which is a component responsible for running arbitrary scripts. In my engine, I have scripts that are attached to components, so that we can choose to extend the functionality of any component by sticking a script on top of it. Finally, I want to emphasize that different game engines have their own ways of managing the relationship between scenes, assets, components, and scripts. And there is definitely a lot of room for experimentation here. In my game engine, only a single scene is being simulated at a time. We can transition between game scenes, but the bottom line is that there is a current scene that we update frame by frame. This might change in the future, once I add multiplayer code to the engine. Then maybe we will need something such as a remote scene that is calculated by the server, but I'm still thinking about it. We talked a little bit about scenes, assets, and components, but we haven't discussed about exactly how the components are composed inside a scene. We still need a representation for the scene hierarchy. Again, there are a lot of ways to do this, the most widely known scene hierarchy representation is probably the ECS, which stands for Entity Component System. But I'm not necessarily using ECS for my scene hierarchy. My solution for a scene hierarchy is much closer to that of Unreal and Godot, where a scene consists of a hierarchy of components. In Godot, we call them nodes instead of components, but a node is basically a component providing a single functionality. One important thing that I should mention is that each component type is actually allocated in a contiguous region in memory. Each component type has its own memory allocator, so the update order does not really depend on the tree hierarchy, instead they are going to be updated in a for loop and in a cache-friendly manner. The tree hierarchy is mostly here for the game designers to describe the relationship between components. In retrospect, the scene hierarchy of my game engine is pretty similar to that of Godot, but with some key differences. In Godot, you are defining scenes as a subtree of nodes that you can instantiate in another scene. But in my engine, I'm currently going for a more traditional method, where users will have to define a prefab asset, and then you instantiate the prefab inside the current scene. Now that we have a scene hierarchy, 
What does a parent-child relationship imply for components? Well, for most scene hierarchies in a game engine, the parent-child relationship also decides the transform relationship. The transform is a description of an object's position, rotation, and scale in some space. Assuming both parent and child components are in 3D space, then the transform of a child component is relative to its parents. Or to put it another way, the game engine ensures the invariant such that the world transform of a child component is the combination of the local transform of the child component and the world transform of the parent component. To preserve this invariant, we actually have some interesting problems to tackle. For example, if we change the transform of some non-leaf node of a hierarchy, I will have to mark the entire subtree as transform dirty. The next time I try to read the transform of a node that is marked transform dirty, I will have to go upwards and calculate the latest world transform for each node along the path until we reach some node that has a clean transform. One thing to note is that not every component type is going to be in three-dimensional space, so there are some limitations. We can't just assign a 3D component to be the child of a 2D component, as it wouldn't make much sense. But different engines will have their own rules when it comes to defining transform relationships. So that's about it for this month. The scene representation is getting pretty mature now, and we should be able to add scripting really soon. Finally, a little bit of exciting stuff. I think the scene has been static for like the past five months. We should be able to do some basic scripting, like modifying the transform in runtime, maybe rotating a mesh component. There's still so much work to do.